Hi, this video follows on from yesterday's video about nasal breathing and using your diaphragm. Now, just to recap what we talked about yesterday, what should happen in the ideal scenario is when we are in a relaxed rest and digest state, as we breathe in, the diaphragm should come down and flatten, the pelvic floor should drop and the belly should come out of it because basically all the stomach contents should be pushed down as the air comes in. Now the reason that's the best way to breathe um, when we're in a relaxed situation is that the diaphragm has got the biggest surface area for gas exchange. So it's the most efficient way for oxygen to come in and for that to be exchanged with carbon dioxide which comes out again. And when we're being really efficient we put less strain on our bodies and our brains. So we're aiming for maximum efficiency. But the other thing it does is it helps our um, rib cages to expand and become flexible. When we are only breathing, when we're in fight or flight, and we're really only using this top part of the lungs, and the breath is coming very fast and very shallow, the rest of the rib cage actually stays very still and very static. And that's a problem because it means that our back muscles tend to stiffen up. They then tend to sort of cling on to our, our pelvises a bit. Our pelvises become stiff. And then we get low back pain, we get um, hip pain, groin pain, knee pain, that sort of thing. So this breathing using the diaphragm is good not only for reducing the physical stress on the body, but also for helping with, with flexibility of, of the torso, which has a massive effect on flexibility of the rest of the body. So that's what we're going for here. So it's great to practice doing it in sitting and learning to do it as we did yesterday, but it's quite a different position when we're doing it lying down. And we find a lot of people who've got uh, chronic pain don't get good enough sleep. And one of the main reasons they don't get good enough sleep is that they don't breathe properly when they, when they go to sleep. So they're stressed, they're physically stressed when they go to sleep. And that means that they don't sleep as well. They don't get as much um, benefit from it as they should do. And therefore they don't get as much recovery overnight. So I'm gonna to talk today just about improving um, the, your sleep and your breathing as you lie down to go to sleep. Okay, so I'm gonna lie down without further ado. I'm going to imagine this is my this is my bed and so I'm going to start off exactly the same as we discussed yesterday I'm going to put my teeth my teeth I'm going to keep my teeth where they are I'm going to put my tongue just behind the back of my front teeth up onto my palate you're just going to have to trust me now I'm pretending to do that and then I'm going to make sure that my teeth stay open and my mouth mouth closed so tongue up teeth open mouth closed and I'm then going to think about breathing through my nose so just a few breaths through the nose now And you can see that even though I'm breathing through my nose, my shoulder is still coming up. And that's a sign that I'm breathing into the top of my lungs. So what I'm gonna do is to slow that right down. And I'm gonna think about the air coming very slowly down towards my diaphragm. Because the slower I do that, we manage to engage the slow twitch fibers of the diaphragm, which are the ones we want. Um, and that allows me to really expand through here. So I'm gonna try that again, but I'm gonna go very slowly. And you can see that the slower I breathe, the less you see the shoulder moving. And so that's one of the things that you can focus on when you're breathing, is don't let the shoulder move. Not by forcing the shoulder to stay static, but by breathing through here, because the more you breathe through here, you will allow everything to open out here without doing all the work up here, which is where you get poor gas exchange. And the other thing you can focus on as you inhale is feeling your pelvic floor lowering down and feeling your belly pushing out. These are all good signs that you're starting to use this bit. Or you can put a hand on here and feel yourself expanding through here. And then to take that to the next level, if you drop your arm forwards, you'll really stretch out this whole area through here. And then as you take a breath in, you'll really see expanding lower, but as you breathe out, the longer you breathe out, the more you will feel a stretch through this whole area. 
which again just encourages that rib cage mobility. So just to recap, we're talking about tongue goes up to the roof of the mouth, teeth open, lips closed, breathing very, very, very slowly through the nose, feeling the air coming right down to here, dropping the arm forward will really let all your intercostal muscles, your intercostalis muscle, your back muscles all stretch out and it will really give you a, a good stretch of the diaphragm which in turn encourages um, pelvic mobility, allows your hamstrings to relax, allows your back muscles to relax. And so that is today's exercise for getting you from um, fight or flight into rest and digest.